Okay, Dad. Good morning, good morning.
until we come to worship, seeking our Savior and offering our lives to his service. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let all who worship the Lord gather to sing and hear the word. And our days have been hard, and our tears are nearly broken. But the Lord God Almighty will deliver and keep you as God's own. But times have been so hard as though God has forgotten us. Fear not, for the Lord your God is come, and God's kingdom is at hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please join us for uh, him, 148, O Holy Night, verses 1 and 3.
that uh, this year will be a, a bright and better year. I have a couple of announcements I need to make this morning. Uh, first, if uh, you are an elder or a deacon and your term ended and, and you are inactive at, at this point because uh, your term just ended, we'd like to have your keys back so that we can give keys to our uh, new elders and deacons. So please turn them in to me. Uh, deacons are taking names for high school graduates. So if you know someone or college graduates, please uh, let the deacons know because we want to uh, honor them here sooner or later. Christmas decorations will be coming down today after church. It's hard to believe, but the uh, Christmas season is just about ended. Uh, so anyone who can help, uh, we are going to do it safely, try to keep our distance, wear our mask as we take these things down. And, and do it as safely as possible, but if you are able to stay and help, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Year-end reports are uh, due into uh, Cindy from all of our uh, committees. She's going to put together our year-end booklet with all of the reports, and uh, we are going to have that congregational meeting on January 24th, which uh, is a very short meeting. It takes like two or three minutes, but all we do is pass out those year-end reports so everybody has copy of the financial reports and all the other reports from the other committees to take home. So that's coming up on January 24th. Any other announcements this morning? Anything happening that uh, we need to be made aware of? Um, Joe, I, I just like everyone to know that I prepared statements showing your giving for 2020. They're in alphabetic order back there on the table, so if you want to check on the way out today, check and get your giving statement. That will save us a stamp. You do that. Anything else this morning? Okay. If not, we're ready for our children's sermon. Today's children's sermon is called Finding a Safe Place. We all know, and kids are, are well aware, that we're living in a, in, in a dangerous world, especially with this virus that we, we are battling and, and we have to keep safe and uh, do all of those safe practices. Uh, and it's good to find a safe place. And we want this church to be a safe place. We want this church when we gather here to, to be safe and, and we want it to be a place where, where we feel protected. So we, we need to keep the practicing those things. The world is, is a, a dangerous world. And, and uh, you kids probably have discovered that. Sometimes there are students in your class that want to lead you down the wrong path. And, and they'll tell you to follow me and we'll go do this. And you know that'll get you in trouble. So you need to be aware that there are uh, people out there, even in your own classroom, who might lead you in the wrong direction. In the adult world, boy, there's lots of people who uh, make bad decisions and go in the wrong direction and get themselves in, in, in trouble. So it's dangerous out there in the dark, uh, in the adult world. So you, you need to be careful that you have a safe place to go. And like I said, I, I, I'd like to see that, uh, I'd like to say that this church is, is a good, safe place to grow and to learn. There was a boy and his father, and they went camping. And boy, they were having fun. They set up their camp by, by a stream. They went fishing. They set up their tent. And they uh, made a nice campfire. And they were uh, roasting marshmallows. When all at once, the father got a notice on his cell phone that a big thunderstorm had just formed. And it was coming their way. It was a dangerous thunderstorm. And so the father said to his son, Oh, my. We need to put out the fire. We need to take down our tent. We need to uh, get everything together, take everything back up uh, the bank, up to where the car, the truck is parked, and put everything back in the truck. The boy said, oh, Dad, we worked so hard putting up the tent. We're having so much fun. Can't we just stay in the tent when the storm comes and, and we won't get wet in the tent? The father said, no, son, we need to get going. We need to get going now. And so. That's what they did. They took the tent down and put out the fire. They gathered up all their belongings, and as they were carrying everything up the bank to where the truck was, the rain started to fall. They got inside the, the 
truck, and boy, did the rain come down. It poured and poured and poured, and the boy looked out the window, and he noticed the stream rising and getting higher and higher and rougher and rougher, and it came almost all the way up to where the truck was. And suddenly the boy realized, boy, if we would have stayed down there in the tent, we would have been washed away. So that truck was a very, very safe place. And his father was very wise and understood that. You know, the Bible teaches us that safe places are important. The reason the church is a safe place is because it is where people love God and, and love each other and look out for each other. And that's important. You see, churches where people support one another and care for one another, churches where we teach each other the, the good word of God, the truth of God's word, and worship God together, those churches become safe places. And kids, I want you to remember that because as you grow older, as you grow older and, and, and you uh, get married and have kids uh, of your own, the church is best place to, to bring your family and be safe and grow in God's wisdom and understanding and knowledge. This is one of the best places. Let's pray. Lord, do we want to try to be safe as we uh, gather here and follow all, all the, uh, the rules of, of keeping safe with this virus around us, but we also understand that uh, this church and churches that love you and serve you and care about you and support one another are great places where families can grow together and, and, and find that strong foundation to put their feet on. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk to 
Alberta this morning, and uh, Roy is still in the hospital. He's had some complications. Uh, he's, he's had a, a blood clot form and uh, double pneumonia in his lungs, so we need to continue to keep uh, Roy in our prayers and to ask that uh, God would get him through this uh, difficult time, this crucial time. We're adding uh, Colin McGinnis, which is Jack's grandson. Yeah. He has COVID. How old is he, uh, Jack? 26 or 27, I'm not sure. 26 or 27, and he's having a, a difficult time with it, correct? Okay. Uh, also, uh, I, I got an update on uh, David Crudell, David and Patty, and uh, Dave is now uh, walking with a walker and uh, getting stronger. It's been a long process, and, and uh, hopefully he will continue to uh, get better. Uh, I got a call from Cindy earlier in the week, and uh, Rich tested positive for COVID. So, uh, Rich Bigger staff has COVID. I don't know if Cindy has it or not. She's in, in the same house with him, so there's a good possibility, so we need to keep uh, Rich in in Cindy in our prayers. Anything else? Yes. It's with my deepest sadness that I have to report that Josephine Probst, Jim Probst's wife, passed away yesterday after the end of the mark from COVID. I'd like to pray for Jim and his family. Bill was and shared that, uh, that the Probst family needs our prayers of comfort. Jack told me that uh, there, there were like 35 deaths this week. Did you say that, Jack? 31 just at Wilson. 31 just at Wilson's. So it's been a very sad time for many families. Anything else? Cheryl? Yeah, I, I read in a strange thing, and he told me that um, Randy Wong or Carl Wong had been in the hospital with the COVID. Oh, boy. What's his wife's name? Peggy. Peggy. Be with 
these unspoken requests, Lord. You know each and every one of them. We pray that you would work through them. We thank you for Carly's uh, progress. Continue to keep your healing hand upon her. Lord, we thank you, Shirley Benline, and her health. And we, we just heard about uh, Randy Walker and his wife, Peggy, getting COVID. Lord, be with them and their treatments. We lift up to you uh, Bob Marchkowski and his health problems, and Edna Morrison and all that she's facing. Patty and her kidney problem, Lord, we lift up to you. We continue to pray for Bill Bolin and his upcoming knee surgery. Don Thompson in the hospital, we lift up to you. Continue to be with Frank and Karen as they recover from COVID. And Daddy, uh, Dave and Patty Brunel as they recover. Lord, we lift up the, uh, the Proper family as they lost a, a dear loved one, Josephine. Watch over them and comfort their hearts. Lord, we think of uh, Roy and we continue to pray for him as, in his battle against COVID. Lord, we pray that he would get any more blood clots. We, we pray, Lord, that he would get strong enough to come home soon. We think of uh, Ivy Skinder and Shane Ballinger, both with COVID. Rich Bigger staff with COVID. Watch over, watch over him. Col Colin McGinnis battling COVID. Continue to, to watch over these people through this battle and get them through. And, and uh, we lift up Cindy to you, who is quarantining right now. We pray that uh, you would uh, keep that virus from her. So, Lord, we lift all these people up to you and pray that uh, your power and light and healing and touch will be upon their lives. Be with us now as we continue into uh, the year 2021. Help us to uh, fight, fight the battle of moving your church forward in, in this world that we're living in, this very difficult world and difficult time. Give us strength and give us hope. We lift up our military people around the world. Pray that you would be with them, protect them, watch over their lives. Lord, uh, especially this time of year, I'm sure they're missing their families. Bring them home safely when their tour of duty is done. Lord, uh, we lift up those who are around the world sharing the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the full forgiveness, the new life that uh, is offered through the Son. And now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. This time we're going to put our church address up there for those who are watching online. And then play the offertory. <laughs> Spiritual life, 
light that guides our path and, and, and the light that shines down upon us and, and keeps us on that path. So we give you praise and glory for all these wonderful things, and we give you uh, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of uh, Psalm 84, verses 1 through 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow is found at home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God! Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a, a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk, those whose walk is blameless. A Lord Almighty, blessed is the man who trusts in you. This ends the Old Testament reading. Oh, 
Well, the door to 2021 has opened and we have entered and stepped through. We've gathered for the first Sunday in 2021 to worship the Lord together in this new year. It's good to be in church. If you want to start off the year on the right foot, this is the place to be. And I believe it is for several reasons. And the first reason is we come here to gain wisdom. Most people who get themselves in trouble do so because they've made wrong or unwise decisions in life. And that, that decision has led to trouble. And I can testify to that. I've made bad decisions, especially in my younger years. And those decisions led me down the wrong road. And I found out the hard way in life. Better to, to gain wisdom. And here we can gain wisdom as we learn about God's Word and the tried and, and tested truths of God's Word. The second thing why it's important is to be here is because we grow spiritually here. As we worship God together, as we sing these songs that, that, that Ryan just led us in, they get into our spirits as we learn and hear the Word of God. In the depths of our being, we are impacted spiritually. We begin to draw these things in, and it causes spiritual growth. This place should be a garden of rich soil where we take root spiritually and we grow, and as we grow, our lives produce fruit. Our lives produce those kinds of, uh, of things that bring blessings not only to us and our families, but to those around us. And the third reason why this is a great place to be to start the year, we come here to support one another. The church it is a place where the community of faith gathers and makes connections with one another. We become a family in the Lord. This is where we make family ties. This is where we make connections with one another. And these connections form a, a, a network of support and encouragement. We have each other's backs as we go through the difficult times in life. Now, it's a big family. But as you get connected to the family of God, you really begin to care about your brothers and sisters in Christ, and they care for you. You could say that we open the door for one another here, and we open the door for those who are outside the church who are looking to connect into a spiritual family. See, many people outside the church do not realize that the wisdom you can gain here, the spiritual growth you can go through here, and the connections that you can make here at, at a good church can make a big difference in your life and the decisions you make and how that impacts your future and your family's future. So we want to keep that door open and say, welcome, connect with us. Let's grow together. The writer of Psalm 84 knew how important it was to be rooted in that local community of faith. Let's listen to what he said again. Psalm 84, 1 and 2. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart my flesh cry out for the living God. So no doubt about it, this psalmist understood the importance of uh, of that community of faith and being in the Lord's presence and worshiping the Lord and the connections that were made there. He clearly understood the difference between someone who neglected God and, and a relationship with God and someone who valued that relationship and were committed to that relationship, heart, body, mind, and soul. And he did not want to miss out on what God had in store for him. He didn't want his family to miss out on, on what God had in store for his family. Now, during the days of Moses, as the Israelites wandered through the wilderness, the sons of Korah 
were assigned the responsibility of being the doorkeepers of the tabernacle. And this was a generational commitment, assignment. The sons of Korah and their grandsons and their great-grandsons and so on and so forth were given that assignment of doorkeepers. So when the temple was built in Jerusalem, the sons of Korah continued with that responsibility. Listen to, to what the psalmist says about being a doorkeeper in God's house. Psalm 84, 10. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. So the psalmist realized how important that position of doorkeeper in God's house was. The doorkeeper would open the door to the people outside the temple and they would come in and they would experience God's presence as they worship God. They would learn uh, about the truths and the powerful principles of God's word. They would receive God's wisdom. Their families would be strengthened. Their job as doorkeeper was extremely important. You see, the world outside offered pleasures, yeah, Entertainments, yeah, but also wickedness and, and corruption. But that doorkeeper offered God's presence, God's light, and God's blessings to those who would come in. Now, I would consider one person as a doorkeeper in, in our New Testament lesson today, it would be Joseph, Mary's husband, and, and uh, Jesus, you could say Jesus' earthly father, the caretaker of Jesus in his younger years. His priority was his relationship with God and his family. He knew how important it was for them to have a solid foundation in God and a solid connection to a local community of faith. He didn't want his family to, to be exposed to the dangers of, the, his, of this world. He wanted his family to be solid and on that solid Foundation, And because of that, because Joseph's desire was to protect his family and see his family grow, he was sensitive to God's voice. Listen to, to Matthew 2.13 again. When the Lord had gone, an angel of, of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph listened. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there and I, until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph's love for God and his relationship with God and Joseph's love for his family kept him in a spiritually sensitive state where he listened to God's voice. And if God said, go to that door, open it, go through it, and take your family in that direction, he heard and he obeyed. He went in that direction. Matthew 2, 19. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. And, and notice that jo Joseph didn't get overwhelmed by everything that was happening. His life wasn't stable at this point. They, they were... Uh, in, in, a, in an unsettled time of life. But he didn't let that overwhelm him. He listened to God and, and he opened the next door. And he went through that next door. And by faith, he let his family through that, that next door. And, and although the times and, and, and the circumstances were shifting and changing, he kept his ear focused on the Lord. Finally, God led him to a place where they could plant their spiritual roots. Finally, God led them to a place where they could join the community of believers and grow together in, in that wisdom that I've been talking about and in all the blessings of this larger church family. Matthew 2.23. And he went and he lived in a town called Nazareth. So it was fulfilled it was said through the prophet that he would be called a Nazarene. So Joseph was a door opener. Wherever God told him
him to go, he would open that door and, and he would lead his family through it because he wanted his family to be blessed and protected by the Lord. But not only that, through obeying the Lord, he was a prophecy fulfiller because the prophets of the Old Testament said that the Messiah was going to be a Nazarene. And that is where Joseph settled his family eventually, there in Nazareth. And Jesus grew up to become a, a Nazarene. So like uh, the psalmist, let's realize the importance of our connection to a family of faith, to our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's be dwarfed. When we are, we open doors to a place of wisdom. We open doors to a place where the spiritual truths are taught, and we can grasp them, and we can apply them. And the Spirit who teaches us can empower us to take those truths. Let's open these doors for our families. Let's make sure our families are on that solid foundation of faith in God and connection to one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. And then let's keep those doors open to the community because there are people out there who want to establish their feet solidly on that firm foundation. People who want to grow in their wisdom and their knowledge and people who want to receive the blessings God has in store for them. In 2021, Let's be door openers. Amen. Let's turn to our final hymn. Hymn number 166. We three kids.
gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.